is losing 15% of its topsoil annually. Latin America's loss is an estimated 5% a year. As a result, lacs who live in these continents are forced to migrate to distant places in search of new habitations, thereby becoming environmental refugees. Only a small portion of the earth has green cover. The rest is made up of oceans and deserts. Experiments conducted all over the world have revealed that the deserts are expanding. One need only juxtapose this with the population explosion to know the grave crisis confronting mankind. We have altered the face of the earth more drastically and dealt far more severe blows on the environment during the last one century than our predecessors had done. Thanks to our thoughtless deeds, severe floods and droughts have become a regular phenomenon in our lives. It is the topsoil which bears the brunt of such floods and droughts. The death throes of the topsoil begin with the loss of green cover. Subsequently, strong winds and gushing water destroy the organic composition of the soil and remove it to far-off places or lakes. Soil erosion due to high-velocity winds would result in the spread of the process of erosion like a contagious disease. These moving mounds of sand would continually destroy the nearby farms and the entire green cover close to it. The removal of the topsoil in layers by the runoff is known as sheet erosion. This would often result in the removal of the entire top layer in an area resulting in the exposure of irradiative rocks. The heavy runoff often create deep channels and take away the layers of sand abutting it. This is known as gully erosion. In India, on an average, about 600 million tons of topsoil is getting transported annually to the sea. A large part of the soil is composed of such nutrients as nitrate, phosphorus and potash. The topsoil that we see today was formed through processes lasting millions of years. Growth of vegetation is possible only in the 25 centimeters thick top layer composed of the fast depleting minerals and organic substances. The soil below is sterile and lifeless. The top soil is a world filled with an amazing variety of micro and macro organisms. Mankind can only dream of recreating them and possibly try to safeguard them. Only a rich green cover can protect the topsoil forever. It would take years to create green cover in a particular place. Even if one succeeded in planting vegetation, it is imperative to create conditions conducive for its growth, overcoming strong winds and heavy runoff. 
Traditionally, we have been protecting the top soil by raising granite buns, but they tend to restrict the spread of green vegetation. Alternatively, one could go in for contour buns, but they would collapse if the top bund was weak. The innovative genius of man has found a new method to protect the top soil, the use of coir geotextiles, an eco-friendly way to soil protection. Coir geotextiles vibe well with nature. The first thing to be done for laying coir geotextile is to clear and level the land. Once this is done, one feet deep trenches should be dug at the top and bottom ends of the slope. The Koya geotextile suited for a given land area should be chosen after assessing the texture, structure, density, pore space and the composition of the soil, the lay of the land and the climatic conditions. Once the textile is laid out, the two ends and joints should be fixed using J-clips. The trenches are then filled. All the layers of the coir geotextile are made to overlap and then are clipped together. It was in the 1930s in South Carolina that geotextiles were successfully experimented with for the first time. Subsequently, geotextiles were used extensively in different parts of Europe as well as the USA in the 1960s. Now, geotextiles are being increasingly used the world over in civil engineering. Once the textile is laid out, fast-growing grass saplings or seedlings can be planted between the grids. The coir fibre would prevent the seeds and the saplings from getting washed away, thus ensuring that they grow where they are planted. Synthetic textiles made of substances such as polypropylene, polyester, polyamide and polyethylene cover the major share of geotextiles. However, it was soon found that these non-degradable substances remained in the soil, aggravating the pollution problem. Coir geotextiles do not pollute the environment and add to the fertility of the soil upon biodegradation. The use of coir geotextile is comparatively cheap on account of the low labor component and gestation period. The grids of the geotextile prevent soil erosion by acting like small check dams. The coir net would break up runoff and dissipate the energy of the flowing water, thus facilitating better seepage.
Koya Geotextile is a boon for those who are in search for an answer to the problems of soil erosion, siltation and desertification. These can be laid on the banks of rivers and reservoirs to protect the topsoil and prevent siltation. When the capacity of lakes and reservoirs are protected, there would be a reduction in floods and droughts and a consequent increase in the capacity for energy production. Koya Geotextile is being used to create green-covered road embankments to strengthen them and prevent accidents and breach in transport. Coir fiber needed for making geotextile is made out of coconut husk abundantly available in the tropics. With coconut cultivation spreading to more and more areas and coconut output increasing sharply, there's an assured supply of this natural raw material. With the mechanized production of coir fiber becoming popular, it has become possible to manufacture coir quickly and in any climate. The production of coir fiber has increased manifold during the last one decade. The Koya Board, set up by the Government of India for promotion of the car industry, has been encouraging modernization and the diversification of Koya products. Thanks to such efforts, the Koya industry has come of age today and the production of geotextiles too has increased. Koya needled felt, a non-woven product, can also be used as a geotextile. The longevity of Koya textile is 15 times that of cotton textiles and 8 times that of the textiles made of jute. Koya geotextiles are available in various densities. There are standard grades specified by the Koya board, but any grade and composition of retting can be made to customer specifications. The specification requirements may vary according to matting density to meet soil pressure, requirements of microclimate and landscape. This non-conventional yet scientific soil protection method using natural coir fiber is without a doubt an assured way to a green and healthy environment.